Let's think about how we might show trade in our usual supply and demand graph. Suppose that we're looking at the market for good two internally, and we have domestic demand and domestic supply, which lead without any trade to an equilibrium of price P2 star and quantity consumed X2 star. Now, if the country opens up to trade and good two is available at a cheaper price on international markets, the way we could show that here is to add foreign supply as being perfectly elastic at that international price. So if we think this country is smaller relative to the rest of the world, which is an assumption we make explicitly whenever we give prices internationally as independent of what this country does, then we'll be able to show foreign supply as a horizontal line at the world price. P2W. So what will happen? Now we have two supply curves. Which one applies? Well, from the perspective of domestic consumers, they will simply want to pay the lowest price possible. Remember, with all of these models, we're assuming that the good is a homogeneous, so it's equivalent regardless of who produces it. Well, then the effective supply curve from the domestic consumer's perspective will be on the first few units, the first uh, segment. The good is available at the lowest price from domestic producers, after which it is available at the lowest price from foreign producers. So the effective supply based by domestic consumers is the one marked here. And so what that means is domestic consumers will choose to, to consume at the intersection of demand and the supply they face. X2 consumption. But domestic producers will not be able to sell this many units. They will be able to sell this amount. X2 production. And the difference will be furnished by foreign producers. So there will be imports. If we want, we can link this to our graph from before, from where we were drawing the consumption and production possibilities curves. For the country shown here, the consumption and production without trade were as marked here. That's the X2 star. And this would be X1 star, which we can show separately in the market for good one. We didn't talk about an internal price. But if we wanted to, we could. It would be simply shown by the slope of the production possibilities curve at that point of production. Here, that slope is relatively flat. So good two is relatively expensive. When the country opens up to trade, good two is available at a lower price from foreign producers. In other words, P2W is lower than P2 star. Well, then what happens is the country will import some of good two and export some of good one. The amount consumed in that country will increase. We will consume it B, so this will be X to C for consumption. The amount produced in the country will decrease. So this would be X to C. And this would be x to p. Okay, that's these two. The difference between them is the amount of imports of good two, and that is this segment in this graph. 
if the ratio of prices internationally is 1 to 1, then P to W simply equals P1 W. We already saw how if, in a given market, the equilibrium price without trade is greater than the world price, then when the country opens up to trade, it will import that good. There will still be some quantity produced internally by domestic producers, usually, but then the rest of the quantity consumed domestically will be imported from foreign producers. Conversely, if we look at a market where the equilibrium price before trade is below the world price, then the world price, or rather the external market overall, will be present from the perspective of this country as foreign demand rather than foreign supply. And so for the first segment, the highest price is paid by domestic consumers. But after that, it's paid by foreign consumers. So the effective demand curve from the perspective of domestic producers is has this shape, okay? Some segment that tracks domestic demand and then a segment that tracks foreign demand. This is similar to the way effective supply in this other case for domestic consumers was made up of domestic supply and foreign supply. So now the outcome will be From the perspective of domestic producers, they will want to produce this quantity, X1P. However, only part of that will go to domestic consumers, X1C. The rest will go to foreign consumers, so it will be exports. It's worth now stepping back to examine how consumers and producers in both scenarios are affected. First, let's look at the market in which this country will be an importer. Initially, without trade, the equilibrium price was P2 star and the quantity produced and consumed was X2 star. That meant that consumers, so domestic buyers, had total surplus as described by this triangle and domestic producers had this surplus. After the country opens up the trade, domestic consumers are able to buy the good at a lower price and buy more of it. So their surplus increases dramatically. Okay, this is consumer surplus with imports. Domestic producers, on the other hand, obtain a smaller price for their goods and are selling fewer units. So produce a surplus with imports is this smaller triangle. So if you compare surplus before trade, summed up over consumers and producers, it formed this triangle. With trade, total surplus combines consumer surplus and produces surplus. So it consists of the before trade total surplus plus this area. So this area is the gain in total surplus from opening up to trade. Another way you can look at it is that if you're starting from a free trade case and then you cut off imports, you close off the, um, the country to trade, this will be surplus that's lost. That will be a type of dead weight loss. In the other case, if we're looking at the market where this country is an exporter, then produce a surplus increased from this initial area to this new one. So domestic producers are much better off. Domestic consumers are worse off. 
they're forced to now pay a higher price because they're competing with foreign consumers and they're buying fewer units, so their new surplus is much smaller than before. Just as in the case of imports, with trade, the total surplus is greater than before. In particular, there will be this area that is a net gain. And so one thing you could see right away is that even though one side of the market is hurt in both cases, here domestic producers are hurt, here domestic consumers are hurt, the side that benefits benefits by a greater amount than the losses of the side that loses. There's a net gain. So at least theoretically, it should be possible to redistribute that net gain so that part of it goes to the side that lost, in which case everyone could be better off. It's simply an issue of how you allocate the gains from trade, but in either case, whether the country ends up importing or exporting the good, we should expect it to be better off.